happened with neuropathy is, is that your nerve cells are starting to die. And it can occur in different places with different symptoms depending on what cells are dying. Uh, things like, for example, Alzheimer's is an obvious example of nerve cell death. Uh, things like ALS, things like uh, Parkinson's disease, these are just all different formats, uh, different disease states that result from nerves dying. And our endocannabinoid system plays a very unique role in trying to protect us from various kinds of nerve cell death. So what's going on with the endocannabinoid system is that it's something that protects our nerves in general and uh, helps promote nerve growth and nerve health and rewiring actually of your brain. You know, adults up until the uh, fairly recent past it was believed that we no longer had the capacity to regenerate nerves. And what we now know is that we do have that capacity, but furthermore, what we know is that nerve regeneration in the brain is very much regulated by uh, these marijuana-like compounds, these endocannabinoids. So we have a whole host of very important uh, activities, the direct protection of nerves from dying, the promotion of regeneration, the uh, promotion of, of, of learning, of, of relearning things is a very important uh, biological effect of our endocannabinoid system. So what are the kinds of things that we can do to try and promote health in these areas? On the one hand, we, everybody should make sure they take in enough essential fatty acids. Uh, they're called essential because we can't make them. And certainly I would say one of the best sources for that is that we should be consuming uh, hemp oil. And the reason I say that as opposed to fish oil is because you can get organic hemp oil so it's not going to be contaminated with things like mercury. Um, and, and that's going to allow our bodies to make our endocannabinoids. We often hear about the beneficial effects of things like omega-3s and omega-6s. At least some of the attributes of those compounds are the result of them being converted into these endocannabinoids, into these marijuana-like compounds. So at least that way your body can do what your body can do. You're giving it the tools to make the things that you need. But in many cases, that's not sufficient, and we have to supplement beyond what our body can make. And there's only one planet, or there's only one plant on the planet that has the capacity to really uh, mimic our immune, the way our body works with these endocannabinoids, and, and that's marijuana. So marijuana actually directly mimics these particular compounds, and as a result, it has these strong neuroprotective effects. But because marijuana and these endocannabinoids, their activities are so pervasive in our body, they literally regulate every system in your body, your immune system, digestive system, reproductive system, cardiovascular system. Everything in your body is homeostatically maintained by endocannabinoids, meaning balance. They are, they are how our body tries to balance how we interact with our environment when our environment becomes stressful for us, stressful psychologically, stressful biochemically. Um, so these are very, very critical compounds, and uh, the use of cannabis can have a profound effect in terms of helping to stop nerve degeneration, helping restore functional nerves, helping restore new ways of thinking, uh, and, and this is just really touching on the surface of the humongous number of benefits that this plant can have for so many different illnesses. It's not that uh, we should be limiting it to one thing or another. And what our cannabinoid system has evolved to do over many hundreds of millions of years has been to protect us from those kinds of imbalances, uh, to restore the kind of uh, health that we need. And because of our environment in particular, and because we are living longer, we need to be able to adapt very rapidly today. And we can't do that on an evolutionary scale. The way for us to do that as people, as intelligent people, is to make sure we're eating good diets, stay away from toxins, and eat these essential fatty acids, and when necessary, consume cannabinoids. How often a day will you smoke, Kathy? I usually only smoke in the evening, but since I was nervous this morning, my throat is bothering me. And um, to calm the muscles, I'll just make a little bit of this 
and then I'll be able to go in the pool. But if I took a muscle relaxer, I would have to go to bed. And that would be the end of her day. Beautiful sunny day that it is. And I would probably wake up crying. Because she didn't get to be out in the sun or in the pool exercising or living a normal life. And then I would not be able to sleep that night because um, I slept in the afternoon. So it really messes me up. And I truly believe that people right now that use insulin, that if they understood what we, what I've gone through, just to make a point, um, if they were prescribed insulin now, they will never ever be given a hypodermic needle by this DEA. They will never give them the needle to use their medication. So, um, the big thing is that I expect this. Um, that is what upsets so many people. And, um, I'm sorry if it upset you, but it keeps me happy and it keeps me alive. Thank you. No more. Okay. Dogs gotta get it. Of course. Oh, wait, you heard? This is the one thing she can do when she smokes pot. If she took a muscle relaxer right now, she wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. Okay. Where's the phone? Uh, that's the water on. That's beautiful. I got fun to do the quarter. <laughs> this is what keeps my um, legs very strong, very strong. Well, see, it also, this is the only place I um, can massage my hands myself, like running the into the water. <laughs> He's just scared of me in the house. Um, I try to work every muscle while I'm in here. That's another thing they told me to do, not to exercise. The doctor said not to ever tire my muscles. Your teeth As you can see, I do not listen to doctors. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, well, oh, thank you, Gordon.